Welcome to Build FPV. Today we're building this mini Airblade Transformer 4 inch drone, long range sender. If you want a chance to win the frame and some props, stay till the end. My name is Akela, this is Max. <laughs> My name is Akela, this is Max. We are Build FPV. Um, Today we're building this, a couple key features is it's got the DJI Cadex Vista, we got a DK's GoPro on here, and it's a, it's a long range micro drone. So let's get into the official parts list. So we got the Transformer Mini frame, 4 inch. 4 inch frame. The Cadex Vista to go on it, some uh, 4850 kV Airblade motors. Yeah, those are 1404 size, so pretty tiny. Beta FPV 20 amp 4-in-1 ESC combo. Yeah, it's like an all-in-one, man. It just does ESC, flight controller. I'm surprised they didn't stick tiny. a receiver on there. Super tiny. Crossfire Nano for the RX. And then uh, the TBS GPS. TBS GPS. Firefly Beacon, which you were saying is powered by itself or whatever. Um, yeah. So, which is good because you uh, eject a battery, and it'll go for it'll beep for like 24 hours. It senses that the battery's been power's been lost, and then it'll beep for 24 hours or more and shine an LED light, so you can go on the old scavenger hunt and find your. <laughs> Find your drone somewhere in the top of a tree somewhere. The best part, two blade, 40-24. Yeah. 1.5 millimeter. Um, the, the bigger True RC antennas. OCB. OCB. Yeah. Slightly less decibel gain than the Singularity, which I learned this morning, but I haven't noticed a big difference. What else we got? We got the 3D printed parts for the GPS, the Crossfire Immortal T, and the Naked GoPro. BC FPV Society, Stephen Roy, shout out if you see this video. Thank you for all your prints, that was that was clutch. Yeah, so we also have a GMB 3S850, and then we've got a GMB uh, 554S. So we've got 3S, 4S, and then um, they're over there, but we're also going to build a 4S lithium ion pack which I don't think we'll build on this series, but that is what we're gonna test out. We'll build one of those, and we're shooting for like the 27 minute flight time with that, probably with the 4S version. Cruising. Just go cruise. Uh, we almost forgot, the first thing we need to do before we start building the frame is plug in the flight controller into Betaflight, because... Make sure it's not dead. Yeah, a lot of times you won't get a warranty on your dead on arrival flight controller if you, don't test it first. So if you put any solder on it and then you plug it in, you're like, oh, this doesn't work. Well, you should have luck. So first thing you wanna do is test it to make sure that it is working. And I forget to do that almost every time. That's fair. So let's do that. All right. So we have now confirmed that the flight controller is not dead on arrival. Okay, so we're gonna start with the motors. So you can actually get these in different colors, but I think that uh, the matte black looks pretty sick. But you can get it in a Superman color from Airblade, which is um, blue on the sides and, and then red on the top, or maybe the other way around, but I don't know, these look pretty fucking sick. Yeah, so if we didn't already mention it, we are building uh, on rotorbuilds.com uh, the micro long range rig by Wiffles. So Wiffles, shout out to you. Thanks for letting us copy your build. All right. Okay, are any of those motors touching? So the next thing you wanna check are any of your motor screws touching the copper winding. Because if they are, your motor won't spin. Why do those seem to tight? They might have tightened too much. I think they're tightened too, too much. Yeah? Yeah. So what we're noticing is that this one's spinning really free and these ones feel a bit jammed, and we're thinking that it's the the motor wires touching the bell. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, those all feel better. Okay. Now we've got some motor wires. Got the motors on. What motor are we, wires good. What are we gonna do next? The old flight controller mount. So that's that guy. So what do we need to know about flight controllers? Need to directionally mount it properly. That's definitely something. Yeah, and so how do you see that? Goes this way. It goes on an angle. Which you can tell. Um, is there an arrow? That's on upside one? down. So there's an arrow. Check it out. Oh yeah, there is an arrow on this one. So it's pointing forward. Nice. And then what do we have for hardware here? Okay, so these are gonna be your screws. They're gonna mount up through the frame. Four of them? There should be four. They give us an extra. These are if you want to have plug-in motor wires, which I don't know who would ever want to plug in motor wire, but Dude, they're tight. They're there. Okay. You're also going to put these gummies on mm -hmm. as well. Three, four. This is my least favorite job by far. The, the gummies? entire build, I hate them. And these ones are so small. Alrighty, so you've got those gummies in. So on the build on rotor builds that we're following, Whipples doesn't just have this gummy sitting directly on there. He's got another gummy sitting on top. So something like that, then that, and then he's cranking that down. So I think that's what we're gonna go with too. Looks about right. Okay, so, and these are gummies that I'm using from a Mamba stack. Uh, if you don't have them, I don't know. That's the thing about FPV, man. Like you, you just have to, to, you just need to like, this is random stuff that's come with other builds yeah. that I've just like built up. If you didn't have them, I guess the second best option is hopefully you have M2 nuts. Something. So you could have a standoff cause you do have quite a bit of room, right? Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I would Jimmy rig something. And that's kind of the beauty of this hobby is that you just have to figure it out. You have to have extra pieces because like the flight controller company doesn't know what you're mounting it to and that's why they don't give you all the pieces. So I get it. We're mounting these gummies, which is basically just uh, like extra gummies that came with the Mamba stack. And if you don't have those, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, what do you, what would be your advice? Hopefully your home hybrid is open. Yeah. So what we're trying to say is that if you, this is your first build, which it shouldn't be because this is a, probably a pretty difficult build to do on your first build, um, you want to have extra thing like nylon standoffs. So I ordered a box of these off of Amazon. They're cheap. They're like five bucks. And it gives you like, it gives you this type of thing. It gives you bigger ones. It gives you all, you can just get all kinds of different stuff. And then I also ordered a box of these, which is the same thing. It's just these screws. Um, all this stuff's cheap. And it's very, very helpful yeah. to have that stuff Definitely. when you're building. So something to get for sure. So are we screwing this in or are we letting you solder? Well, let's look underneath it and just make sure it's not touching the frame. It's not touching the frame. No components are touching the frame because carbon fiber conducts. Conducts. All right. So let's screw those down. So I'll give you those. I'll give you those. So the next thing you want to do is figure out your motor length, which they're running up this bad boy. And then chop all those guys. Okay. So next step after that would be pre-tin all our wires. Sap them down first, or do you want pre-tin? Yeah, let's sap them down. Well, I think, we, tin first, right? I think we tin them first. Yeah. So, I'll strip them, and then you wanna tin them. I think you're you're the solder boy today, right? I could do the motors. You do the super small ones. I think you should do them all. Really? And then we're gonna call this video amateur builder or beginner. Beginner builder fucks up a <laughs> transformer mini. Okay, so don't do it over top of the flight controller. You could do like with your globular. You can probably do like one or two wires or like two or three something like that yeah see that boom and see how the wire started melting away it's because they they're cheap ass wires so you just got to be quick like once you see it tape so as akayla does this i guess i'll explain our settings we're using 450 degrees fahrenheit on our uh our pen 
you gotta be really quick when you're touching the pads and all that stuff with a temperature that hot. You can use a lower temperature, but I found for me personally that I'd rather just touch it, be really quick and get it off. But you just don't wanna leave it on there and if the solder's not taking, there's something else going on. So right now we're just tinning the pads, or tinning the wires and then we'll tin the pads and strap these bad boys down. Next step is we're going to take these pieces, which are hockey tape. Hockey tape. We're going to use these pieces, tape them down. I'm just holding. Put one on the end. Okay. She's starting to look like a quad. No way. Um, now you're going to tin all these pads. I don't have a great applicator for the flux, which is kind of embarrassing, right? <laughs> so let's put some flux on here. Okay, so we've added flux to the pads, and now we are going to, Akela is going to tin the pads with great precision. <laughs> and you know what you're doing? Tinning. You know how to tin a pad? What's, what's your, I want to know yours just to make sure that I'm doing it. Up so I touch the pad, I put a little bit, I clean my tip, yep, put I put a little, little bit of solder on, then I touch my pad, and right next to it I try to feed the solder right where the tip bit. is touching. You don't need a lot on these pads. Are we carrying into those old guys that need magnifying helmets? At 22, I'm already there. <laughs> so Kayla, how is uh, <laughs> bridging your, I mean, how is soldering your first mini pads? Freaking terrifying. Although, are they that small compared to, they're not really that small. Yeah, but those ones are like separated a bit. These are like all right together and these aren't even the smallest pads. That's true. That is true. And these aren't motor wires either. There you go. Alright, so he's got the pads tinned, folks. Look at you go. Now are you gonna Stressful. Are you gonna connect these now? Yeah, I guess so. So next step is to take all the tinned wires and connect them to the flight controller, which you're gonna rock out. No problem. So while Kayla solders that, we'll just talk a little bit about motors. So the ones we've got on the air blade are 1404. So the 14 represents the width of the motor right here, 14 millimeters. So those are quite wide compared to this. This is the uh, baby hawk. And then the four on there represents the height. So these are 1106. So they're 11 millimeters wide and six millimeters tall. So they're actually a lot, of, uh, quite a bit taller. So these motors are, I think this is a two and a half inch prop on here. So these motors are doing a four inch prop. I wonder which motors would be more powerful. Those ones. Wider, oh. shorter, taller, skinnier. I feel like if they're taller, skinnier, it would probably be more ripping. It needs to be born under like a... Yeah. Because this is definitely a race drone. You can see motor wires are on. Pads are small. Next thing is the crossbar. Let's check it for shorts. That's true. That's better idea. Continuity. Check. Yep, I don't hear any shorts. This cap doesn't do shit. Oh yeah, maybe it does. Little baby cap. Smoke stopper. Test the ESC out. Stop smoker. I guess we'll need one of these. Here's the uh, moment of truth, folks. Sick. Okay, so so far what we what we just did is we used the continuity checker on our multimeter to make sure there was no shorts. Once we were sure of that, we then used the smoke stopper, which I don't, does this thing even work? I've never had a short, so I don't know. <laughs> Knock on wood. Uh, then we used the smoke stopper, plug that in, the lights turned on. So before we move on, let's get these guys on. Just be careful of that one short wire on the front that we did. I'm surprised that that uh, that these 
these worked out that well. Dude, you did them perfect. It's I'm almost surprised. it's almost easier the small though because you just barely touch and the whole thing flows. It's so it's like the trade-off of like you need less heat and it's quicker to flow it, but you also can't be a shaky bastard yeah. when you're trying to get in there. Okay. That looks really good, man. It looks like we almost know what we're doing. It'll fly. All right. It'll fly. What do we got to do now? Nano. Nano. Let's throw the nano on it. So ground power. Channel one, channel two. Black, red. Black, red, yellow, and then we're gonna do white for Black, channel two RX. Red, yellow, and what color? White. White. And then we also, and then yellow is channel one. Channel one TX to R to UART RX. Channel two RX to UART TX. Okay, so we're gonna tin the paths. Okay, hold on. Because it's a hole, you want to go straight down with that thing. That's true. That'll give you the best, and then just insert it right through the hole. Power would be next. Yep, power. And then I said we were going to do yellow, yellow RX. Yep. Or TX. Channel 1 is yellow. But not least, the channel two. White. Channel two. White. There we go. Nano crossfire. Oh, we right. look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There we go. Okay, so crossfire is connected. I'm just going to tin the other wires, the other side there. Ground five volt, then you're T1 T. Then you're skipping S bus because we don't need it, and then TX1 RX1. So we're gonna go ground. We're gonna go power. So that's five volt power for the nano. So I'm gonna be connecting the white, which was on the far left of the. Crossfire to the TX. Now the channel one TX goes into the RX. All right, so that's what it looks like now. Crossfire on. Okay, so that's gonna do it for part one of this two-part build series. If you wanna see us finish this build next week, you'll have to come back and join us then. Uh, if you like, comment, and subscribe to our channel on this video, which is part one, uh, you'll be entered in the, uh, a draw giveaway to win the Airblade Transformer Mini Long Range Frame and a set of props. I think that's what we're giving away. Sounds like a good deal. So yeah, we'll see you next week and we'll get this build finished. Bye.